Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela from the blog Angela Marie Mead. I'm super excited today because Brandon and I are starting our guest bathroom makeover and let me explain why. This bathroom is just really bland and outdated. It has no storage either. I can't stand the old floor tile, the dingy paint color, the popcorn ceiling, and all of the outdated fixtures. Also, the fact that we don't have a toilet paper holder on the wall is really annoying. It was cheap and broke off the wall shortly after we moved in a few years ago. I also really don't like how the clear, outdated shower is the focal point of the room, and it's the first thing you see when you walk in the space. Overall, I want the bathroom to have a modern cottage and classic look to it, and we're planning on updating just about everything in the room on a budget, including the walls, door, ceiling, flooring, hardware, sink, and fixtures. I seriously can't wait. The biggest challenge in the space will be making over the corner shower, which is a really large part of the room, and we're not going to be replacing it because showers are really expensive to replace. Before we get started though, make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow along. I share new fun DIY and decor videos every week here on the channel. The first project we're tackling is our ugly popcorn ceiling. We've scraped plenty of popcorn ceilings in this house and we don't want to do it again. We're so over it. Instead, we're going to cover the popcorn ceiling up with real shiplap. I started by removing all of the ceiling vent and light covers and figuring out which way my studs run. At this point, I also removed the chrome towel hooks and glass shelf over our toilet. This glass shelf was wobbly and just not my style, so I was really happy to get rid of it. Brandon went behind me and filled all the holes in with spackle. After doing our ceiling and wall prep work, we cut the shiplap boards to size and installed them with liquid nails and brad nails into the studs. If you've been following along on the channel, I recently shared a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to install a shiplap ceiling. I'll link it below in the description box. To hide the cutboard edges and add character to the room, we installed crown molding and I really love the elevated look that it added. We finished off the shiplap ceiling, crown molding, and top half of the bathroom walls with a white paint. Good morning, today is demo day. And I say that with quotations because we are just doing some minor demo. We really just need to get the bathroom ready for new floor tile. Brandon is going to do this demo today while I work on trying to figure out what new floor tile we're going to use in this bathroom makeover. Before starting on the floor tile, Brandon disconnected our toilet and put it out of the way in the shower. Then he removed our pedestal sink, which we're getting rid of because it's cracked and it has zero storage. To finish off the demo, Brandon removed our builder grade baseboards. We're also going to be replacing the baseboards and doing a taller baseboard for a more custom look when we add our wainscoting. I've had the hardest time trying to figure out what flooring to use for this bathroom makeover. I considered a bunch of different options and I even shared in a video recently five different bathroom flooring options. I'll link that below. I really wanted to save time and money by using a peel and stick tile. However, after receiving some samples in the mail, the quality just wasn't what I wanted it to be. So I decided that going with a ceramic tile would be the best option because ultimately it's going to be really long lasting and durable. I decided to go with a budget friendly ceramic tile that we would install ourselves. I found the tile at Home Depot it's a mosaic color with neutral white and gray colors, which I thought would work well with our modern cottage look I'm trying to achieve. We are by no means experts, but after doing some research, we determined that we could tile over our existing tile since this room is on a ground floor and the current tile is in a good solid condition. Brandon started with a tile primer to help with the adhesion of the mortar to our existing ceramic tile.
Then we laid our tiles out and made all of the special edge cuts first. This step definitely took us the longest, but it made the process a lot easier for installing the tile. We also had to cut the bottom of our door jams with our Dremel in order to fit the new tile under it. After all of that, it was time to mix the mortar and start laying the tiles down. This was our first time working with mosaic tile, and it was a bit more challenging than other tiles we've used in the past, but I think it looks so good and it was totally worth the extra effort. After the mortar set for a day, Brandon grouted the tile. I decided a white grout was the best way to go since it would be subtle and less distracting with the mosaic tile and other elements in the room. The last step was to buff the grout haze off of the tiles. After installing the new floor tile, Brandon installed our new toilet. I'm super excited to finally have an upgraded comfort height toilet that looks nice too. I'm about to head to Liz. I want to look for some ideas and options for our wall treatment. I want to go with a wings coating that's just halfway up the wall. Originally I was thinking of board and batten or beadboard, but I've done both of those and I want to do something different. I'm looking for something that's budget friendly, but also only a quarter inch thick so it won't be too thick against our door casings. I might try a tongue and groove board, but I don't know. I'm just going to go see what they have. All of the options I found were either a bit too short or wide in width, or they were too pricey, or they were just too knotty and wouldn't be easy to paint. So I'm going to try something else that I'll explain about soon. While I was at Liz though, I did find the 5 inch baseboards I want to use, which I was excited about. It's time to pick a paint color for the wainscoting and doors in the bathroom. One of the biggest problems I have with this space though is that there's no natural light. I saw some really beautiful green paint colors on Pinterest that I thought would look perfect for the cottage look I'm going for, but I'm going to test them out and see how they look in my actual space. I tested the green paint samples on one of our lower walls and the back of one of our doors. While testing them out, I realized one of the samples was totally white and must not have been tinted at the paint counter. It was really frustrating because I really wanted to sample the color. Overall, all of the green paint colors that I tested just weren't looking right in our fluorescent lighting. I think they would look really beautiful in a bathroom with lots of natural light. Luckily, I had a bunch of gray paint samples on hand already, so I tested those out to give myself more options for the paint color. Once the paint samples dried, I looked at them with the lights on and off, and I decided to go with Mindful Gray by Sherwin-Williams. We've used this paint color a lot in this house, but it just seems to work really well with the low light that we get. So now that I have a paint color picked out, we can finally get started with our wings coating, which I finally figured out what I want to do. If you follow along on Instagram, I shared that I decided to do both shiplap boards using quarter inch thick plywood instead of real shiplap boards. And I did this to both save money and to keep our wall treatment on the thinner side and not too thick. We cut the plywood down into four and a half inch wide strips that were 34 inches tall. And I have a step-by-step -step video tutorial that I shared the other week explaining all of the details from how we figured out the materials and sizing to how we installed the boards to get a real shiplap look. I'll link that video below in the description box.
It was a really easy project involving more liquid nails and brad nails. I love how it turned out and the character that the vertical shiplap adds to the space. Okay, now it's time to do something about this huge corner shower that's taking over the space when you first walk into the bathroom. It wasn't in the budget to replace the shower because showers are really expensive to replace. So my first idea to kind of hide it and outdo the tile is to add a frosted film to the clear glass. But after thinking that through, I wasn't crazy about the idea because I thought it would be a little difficult to install and also you'd still see this chrome metal which doesn't really match the other fixtures I want to use in the space. My second idea is to install a corner shower rod and hang a extra long shower curtain from it to totally close it in. I think that the texture from the shower curtain will be really soft and pretty to look at when you first walk into the space. After searching high and low, I found one on Amazon that looks like it's going to work and it came in an oil rubbed bronze color which is going to work great with the other colors of the fixtures I'm going to be using in the room. So now I have to install it and I really hope this works out because I don't have any more ideas if it doesn't. Fortunately, after attaching the corner shower curtain rod together and testing it out around our shower, I knew it was going to fit. Installing this corner rod is much easier with two people, so luckily Brandon was around to help. We started by figuring out how high we needed the brackets by hanging our extra long shower curtain on the rod. I ordered oil rubbed brown shower curtain hooks to match the rod, but they haven't arrived yet, so I used some chrome hooks that I had on hand already just to test things out. After measuring and marking where the brackets needed to go, we added anchors into the wall for the screws since we couldn't hit any studs. Then we installed the brackets and corner shower rod. Finally, we finished off the rod installation by cutting the middle support bracket to size and screwing it into our shiplap ceiling. I will link both this curtain rod and extra long shower curtain below. They are both from Amazon and were a great price for the quality. Even though we don't have our oil rubbed browns hooks yet, I couldn't wait to hang the shower curtain up and see how it looked. I'm totally loving how it turned out and that we didn't have to do any demo or spend a lot of money to solve our ugly corner shower problem. Alright, so we are about to get started with building our DIY bathroom vanity and I'm super excited about this build because I really wanted to do an all wood stained vanity in the bathroom. I think it's really gonna warm the space up. And if you were to buy a wood vanity brand new, it's gonna be really expensive. So I decided to build one. I came up with a couple different options for different types of wood that we could use. And ultimately, I went with a really budget friendly option using premium pine wood. I hope it turns out good. <laughs> So let's get started. Before we started building the vanity, I came up with a rough sketch of the design for the vanity and determined the measurements I needed so it would fit a 25 inch wide by 22 inch deep sink. We built the bathroom vanity using just half inch thick plywood, two by twos and one by twos and one by threes for about $100 in lumber. To maximize storage, we decided to do double doors on the front and a cute lower shelf on the bottom. I will be sharing a detailed video tutorial and build plans on how to build this vanity in the next few weeks.
We finished off the wood vanity with a beautiful stain and a poly top coat. I'm super excited because today's install day. We're going to add all the final decor and hardware pieces. I hope it all comes together like I'm envisioning. I'm super excited though, so let's get started. Backfists have been taking over our workshop, so I unpacked those and started installing our new bathroom hardware. The decor and fixtures are so much fun because they bring the room all together and really help to define the feel and style of the room. I like to mix metals and bathrooms for a fresh look that's not all matchy-matchy. For this bathroom, I used brass as the dominant metal color and mixed in black and oil rub bronze with a few items like the mirror and shower rod. I wasn't totally sure how high to install our towel hooks because I'm going to add framed art above it. Hopefully this height is just right. Because our light switches are right over our bathroom vanity, I removed them and bought some really cute modern plates. I painted them the same white wall color to blend them better so they won't be as noticeable. To install the bathroom vanity against the wall, Brandon cut our baseboard to go around it and I screwed the vanity into the wall studs. While trying to find the perfect sink to go with our DIY vanity, I ended up buying three different sinks. <laughs> the first sink had a backsplash which was too tall for our vertical shiplap trim. Then I found a beautiful faux marble sink online which was perfect but I didn't know if the faux marble was going to look fake or not because a lot of the reviews said that it didn't look real. So I ended up ordering a third plain white sink with no backsplash as a backup option. After receiving the foam marble sink though, the marble finish looked pretty realistic to me. It did have a slight purple sheen to it, but I liked the overall look of it more than the plain white sink. And the foam marble sink looked perfect on top of our wood vanity and made it look really upscale and custom. And it also looked perfect with our new round brass knobs that I love from Rejuvenation. Brandon took care of installing our beautiful new antique brass faucet that I found for less than $100. I will link this faucet and all the other bathroom items below this video. After installing the brass hardware on our vanity, our old doorknob color and shape looked pretty terrible next to the new pieces, so I replaced the old doorknob with a cute new doorknob. Although I'm still not 100% about the color, I think it looks better than the old one. Brandon installed our new arched mirror over the sink. We don't have any wall lights in this bathroom, just recess lights, so I went in to fill the wall space with a beautiful large mirror, and I totally love the look of this one. For the space above our toilet, I found some modern shelf brackets and attached a scrap 1x8 board to them that I stained the same color as our bathroom vanity. I think it's going to be great for some extra storage. Finally, I finished off the space with some final decor and bathroom essentials like framed art, baskets, towels, and flowers.
love how our guest bathroom makeover came together. I think it's the perfect blend of modern, cottage, and classic. Let me know what you think in the comments below or if you have any questions. And make sure to subscribe and follow along because I will be sharing a lot more fun room makeovers soon as well as some really fun DIY projects. Thank you so much for stopping by.